While watching the online lectures, be sure to use the attached packet to take notes on. You'll find the link for the packet here at the title page for each chapter. Click on it, then print out the packet. These gray boxes in the online lectures refer to the slides and pages in the packet. In this online lecture, I'm going to introduce other factors that can help us quickly generate the Lewis dot structure of an organic molecule. And we'll learn some vocab along the way. So let's start with carbon here. Remember, on the periodic table of elements, carbon is in column 4 which means he has four valence electrons. Remember, valence electrons are electrons that happen to be in the outermost shell of the atom. And it's these outermost electrons that contribute to bonding. So that's why it's important we pay attention to them. What this means is that carbon has the ability to share electrons with each one of his valence electrons, giving him the possibility to make four bonds. This causes him to be tetravalent. But this is not the only type of tetravalent bonding that carbon could make. We're going to see him do this a lot in organic chemistry. In this case, again, he has a total of four bonds, but two of them are involved in a double bond. So we would say this carbon has one double bond and two single bonds. We're also going to see carbon do this, make one triple bond and one single bond. Knowing this about carbon enables us to quickly generate a Lewis dot structure that has carbon in it. Meaning that if we know carbon takes on these three forms, we're going to be able to quickly generate the bonds in the molecule. But remember, carbon is not the only atom extensively studied in organic chemistry. There's also nitrogen. On the periodic table, nitrogen is in column 5, so he happens to have 5 valence electrons which means we're going to see nitrogen do this a lot, make three bonds and have one lone pair. These three bonds make him trivalent. Again, if we have a nitrogen in our Lewis dot structure, we might want to start with this bonding arrangement when we go to generate it. Let's even do the same analysis for oxygen. Oxygen on the periodic table is in column 6, which gives him six valence electrons. We're going to see oxygen do this a lot, make two bonds and have two lone pairs, which means he is divalent. And lastly here, we're going to see a lot of halogens in organic chemistry. All the halogens are in column 7, so therefore they have 7 valence electrons. And typically, halogens make only one bond, which means they're going to play the role as a monovalent atom. Now, let's go back to carbon here. In fact, let's consider this molecule right here and this molecule right here. I want to show you one of the consequences of the fact that carbon could make four single bonds. Notice the molecule on the left. He happens to have four carbons. And the molecule on the right also has four carbons. And if you count the number of hydrogens in these molecules, you'll see that the molecule on the left has 10 hydrogens. And that's also true for the molecule on the right. These molecules are referred to each other as constitutional isomers. This means that they have the same number of atoms, but they have different connections. Take a second to make this observation. For instance, the molecule on the right has four carbons in a straight long chain whereas the molecule on the left has three carbons in a chain, with one carbon directly connected to the central carbon within that chain. We're going to see later on that in organic chemistry, these are different molecules. They have different names, they react differently, and they have a different overall geometry. Now, let's look at a sample problem here. This could be a typical question on an organic chemistry test. They might ask you, what are the two constitutional isomers that have the molecular formula C3H7Br? Notice all the skills I have to put together here to get to the answer. The first thing I would do is want to generate the Lewis dot structure of this molecule. That means I would start with the carbons and their number of valence electrons. Then I would add in my hydrogens with their valence electron, and I'd add a Br. Notice he has his seven valence electrons. 
And remember, using a method that I talked about before in a previous online lecture to generate a Lewis dot structure, we should start connecting electrons to make bonds. So let's connect these two carbons right here, and let's connect these two carbons right here. And let's also connect these hydrogens. Let's make one connection right here, like this. But what about this Br below? Remember, we learned in this online lecture that he's monovalent, which means we know he's going to make just one bond and have three lone pairs about him. Which means we wouldn't make this connection right here. This would imply that Br is not connected to this molecule in any way. And notice another thing here, too. When Br makes this one bond, he happens to have a total of eight electrons around him, which means he'd have a nice octet. But again, this connection means that Br and that H right there are not connected to this molecule in any way. So we know not to do that. What makes more sense is connect him to one of the carbons, like this. Now we have our nice Br here, monovalent, with its three lone pairs of electrons and connected to our molecule. Now all we have to do is just connect all these carbon-hydrogen bonds. Connecting electrons would give us these bonds right here. Let's connect this hydrogen. Let's connect this hydrogen to this carbon. We could make a connection right here like this and one more like this. And let's clean up this molecule and get a better look at it and notice what we have here. Carbon is bonding in the way that we're familiar with. Each carbon is making four bonds and being tetravalent. So this would be one of our isomers. How would we generate a second constitutional isomer here? Well, remember, all we have to do is make different connections. And the easiest one to do in this case would be connect the Br here. Notice in the molecule on the left, I have the Br connected to the central carbon of the chain. And over here, I have the Br connected to an N carbon in the chain. That constitutes a different connection, making these molecules constitutional isomers to each other. In other online lectures, we're going to see that these molecules are not only different, but will react differently and even have different geometries, making these molecules separate and individual. This is going to be important to know later on in organic chemistry.